we are able to make them kind of very very uh, useful to the industry and also maybe academically also in some journals and all. So that's the main uh, idea in which we try to make it uh, the uh, maybe a false alarm for the person. If you know that the system is still kind of very very uh, experimental stage in India. So uh, this uh, uh, each presentation uh, will be about 20-25 uh, minutes in which we will uh, hope to get uh, uh, with your comments and response in which basically we will use it to further enhance the what are the papers are there but besides the papers we also look forward to your comments in terms of uh, what is your experience in the sense what is still we need to bring in we are also uh, we have updated the course and all which also we will share the information with you and we had a lot of good people, uh, kind of a good uh, expert in the government and all coming in now for these sessions. Many of you are possibly there also, who have also come for some sessions and all. So we look forward to your association in the future also. So that this is a program which, uh, as uh, possibly you are already aware, only program in India which is industry specific program. All other programs which we have are general management program. So that's why here we need your support more than India is. That since all of you are from the energy sector, Please do us, uh, do keep giving us your feedback and what, where we need to, if we need some post correction and all, we look forward to those comments. With those uh, brief comments, I will now uh, hope the session can start and get its logical end. And Dr. Sajid uh, uh, will be there in the next, uh, chair in the next uh, short session, in which he will be talking about academic intro. Before that, uh, our two panelists also there who will be requesting them for some kind of a comments on uh, their feelings and their uh, ideas and obviously possibly can be relevant to the industry and also for our scope and demand. Thank you for coming in all the Thank you. Uh, okay, now as we begin with our keynote speaking sessions, <laughs> a little bit about our keynote speakers. Today our first keynote speaker is uh, Mr. Alok Kumar who is the VP in the area of quantitative finance research with Royal Bank of Scotland. <coughs> he has immense experience in in-house bespoke quantitative techniques in providing independent and accurate and timely perspective on opinion on market and risks. His specialties are forex markets, trading models, time series, econometrics of financial markets, derivatives, equity markets, volatility models, multivariate statistical techniques. <coughs> May I now request Mr. Alok Kumar to kindly come and guide us through his invaluable inputs. Well, I would like to thank uh, NDI, Sarinda, and Sri Rasha to India opportunity to speak. So I come from a different world. I can see the focus is more on energy. So but, uh, like even both the topics are uh, like close to my heart. When I started my uh, research, like energy, the first paper which I wrote was in energy economics and finance speaking, uh, I work in finance, so finance is very close. So thanks again. So uh, like I work for uh, Algo Trading Team, basically it's a team of uh, six point I lead it, like uh, six people, they are mostly PhDs and CFAs. And uh, I work in a field where IT is at least as important as uh, economic models. So uh, like IT is important because in IT currency trading speed is the main thing. And my capital model is important because we look for opportunity to make profit. So like I belong to the world where IT is at least as important as capital models and like so <coughs> IT currency trading is unique because we get millions of data every day. And also data is very different from uh, general data because data are asynchronous. They are very random. They don't come at regular intervals of time. So we take care of such data. Like uh, we use this specialized technique, which is quite unique to uh, like high frequency world. So I I don't want uh, like I will not spend time uh, in explaining those techniques. Probably I would uh, like to give a session on high frequency trading sometime later in MBI. So I just want to focus that uh, main. Uh, thing that uh, research students should focus is on data trading because uh, like I was reading an article day for yesterday I want to highlight a few summary points these uh, like the data is related 
to financial uh, like world. So uh, I want to summarize some of the findings of the uh, data related to modeling in uh, like high frequency trading uh, as such and the financial world uh, like as a whole. So <coughs> the first finding was that data is the most uh, sorry. Uh, Okay, so there was a first finding that among different modeling, time series modeling is more common in uh, like academics as in uh, like financial world and like financial sector. Monte Carlo simulation, like the students in my cell there, so they are uh, like it's being used mostly in finance and less of uh, like mostly used in academics and less of less in industry. However, regression is being used <coughs> equally good, like they both are being used both in financial world and in uh, like academics. Econometrics is also again being used both in academics and financial world. But one thing which I which I find is that machine learning, machine learning techniques is being used more in uh, like, uh, like industry and as compared to academics. So uh, there was few, there there are few other findings uh, like actually when you model the most time you should spend is on data cleaning, <coughs> testing, and uh, also on uh, like basically uh, odd sample forecasting, which is a little bit uh, like topic here. So in my world, like in high frequency world, like. The most key important thing is basically to have the model in uh, like model ready for production <coughs> because uh, in my world speed is very important. So people may do research in uh, like they want they can build model in MATLAB or in other packages. But then once you want to get it ready for production, it takes time. So people should uh, like focus on uh, like. Uh, the language which is being used in industry, they should focus on C++, Java, rather than rely on uh, like MATLAB or SAS. And also, uh, I recommend students they should not rely on uh, like the tools in MATLAB and SAS. Like they have relevant tools for Garch, Archiva. They just plug, like they give the data and give the output. People should start writing like new function. Like they should try to report their own like your function and try to build their own model because that is the right way to do research. So with this, I would like to uh, like like because I don't want to spend more time and it, uh, like working on energy side. So I think that's it for my side. Thank you. Time series is more important to uh, No, I'm saying that uh, yeah. my question is that does time series capture fundamentals also? Fundamentals of a company or whatever you are monitoring. Is uh, it getting captured in time series or? Uh, like time series uh, as a model was used to capture macroeconomics uh, like shocks or like it like, was initially started for uh, detective trends <coughs> and uh, business cycles. So, like in my world, like you can see, trading time series is the key, right? Like, you build time series model to basically predict the price movement in the next few years. So, time series is the most common use thing in the uh, like, price. And this is high frequency trading. And the next key is uh, machine learning, which is very much Thanks. Also, Short term thing, time series becomes the only way to go forward. You don't have the data which is available, you can kind of study the company information. So, and the trading and all, and trans market, you are only relying on short term for customers. And also, uh, like between the buy side and the sell side, there is uh, like buy side they prefer more complex models, and sell side they go for the simplistic models, which is easy to basically uh, like, uh, understand. Yeah, understand. <laughs> and also for data mining, people should uh, like 
not change the property, scratch the property of the data. Like it should be like close to the original data. Thing. Like data mining is the key thing for us. Hi, hello. Uh, I have a basic question. Uh, and I understand what you were saying. After spending so many years in academic, uh, sorry, industry, yeah. I spent nine years in the industry, ten years almost in the industry. Now I'm in the academics. So your point is very valid when you were saying that uh, students need to focus on machine learning, yeah. uh, IT, right? Yeah, right? Now my question is, in academic environment, the servers that we use compared to the servers that we use in the industry is very, very different. Yeah. It's entirely different. Right? Yeah. The capacity or capability of the server to handle the data mm -hmm. in the industry is so different from academics. Like hardly how many records you handle. Excel also is not totally exhausted when you you know teach in a class. So when you are saying that you would be thinking about taking a session in say either India or maybe I can also invite you in IMA. Yeah. Um, how do you think that you know that kind of server or that kind of situation can be simulated? So that the students really benefit okay. from, you know, uh, we always give training in the industry on the job training they get, but is it possible at all to simulate those kind of environment, data environment, cyber environment in the academic, uh, you know, institutes, so that the students get some understanding about it? Because we, I am also te teaching them this kind of models. I also teach them data crunching, data mining, how to understand the data in case of high frequency because most of the times you spend in data cleaning. That's right. The data that you get is so raw, right? So what kind of things or suggestions or advices or what kind of modification is required in the course outline? I think that kind of guidance would be useful. If this is not the right forum, maybe you can talk to the instructor over here later on and can tell them because simulation of that environment is very important I, and I think it's very difficult. Similar yeah, yeah, my yeah, thank you. Yeah, my thanks. Uh, that, that was a very valid question. So my comment would be like people should start uh, doing uh, research or they should start building models using basic Java or C++ because everything is about speed and like in the near future I think you will get billions of data. Like, like as of current you can handle those using SAS or MATLAB. But then uh, my advice would be like people should whenever uh, like you are taking a course in uh, like Research Institute, you should ask students to learn C plus plus Java. At least they know how to uh, like, like like write a model in C plus plus Java. Because in MATLAB or SAS, you have Arifa, Arifa and Dash, and you just take that model, you just <coughs> give input, and you get the output. People should at least learn how to write like new function. And C++ that will help a lot. Yeah, but, but they are training in IT, say, because they have an IT section, and IT area also, right? Yeah. So if they uh, learn the models here, because the most of the times we use softwares. And honestly speaking, students are not that enthusiastic to learn those languages, even if the teacher is enthusiastic to teach them. Yeah. Because they think that it is uh, wasted of time, why should I learn C++ or SAS coding in them? Because in SAS, you actually do not code, you actually know some of the Subroutines that is written. Yeah. Correct. So in that case, I think maybe they are IT learning because there is a separate area for IT. So do you think that their employability improves? If you see some kind of programming knowledge they have, C class or Java, along with this kind of modeling, is that what you would say? Because yeah. as a teacher, maybe it's a separate area that teaches them, but as a teacher, being a teacher in statistics or operations when you are teaching this kind of service, simultaneously teaching both the things might not work. Like, uh, right? And none of the business schools also teach this. Yeah, I think they should, they should start teaching C++ and Java because future is about programming. And people should focus on uh, like any language. Like now we are uh, learning functional language, Haskell. And like I am also learning KDB. Like you learn as you do. So I am also learning because I was coming from a different background. Like I was probably good in SAS, MATLAB, R, but then I think if you want to be in core research area, then you need to learn uh, programming as well. If you want to be in applied, probably you can manage it in SAS, MATLAB. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.
morning everyone. First of all, I want to thank MBA and students and community here to invite me. Uh, first period, I did not come from the market. And that was my first question was that this is something that I did from the market. I, I do not come from the energy market. So how I can be useful and how will I be as a very this program for the And uh, I have also known that there is something on media, which is uh, probably not happening for some reason. But I primarily come from an analytics market and an analytics industry and uh, it is my core passion. So I thought that it will be very useful for me as well. And I will get learn something from energy market. I have some brush with energy market and some of the energy companies I work with for, for a couple of uh, projects. I want to dwell upon use of analytics in industry, specifically in retail. And because this is, uh, I am passionate about the industry itself and I have been in the industry for the last 13 years. So I just want to talk about that. And I was told that I want to speak to the detail that how analytics is being used in retail. So I will just spend some time on that. I have so much to talk about on this, so please. Give me some time that we can talk about 10, 15 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes. So therefore I will just write some of my thoughts in 10 minutes. So what I see from analytics perspective is one of the key elements that you need to have is a, a good affinity for data. And what challenges that I have faced uh, so far working on, on different kinds of uh, projects is that analytics is so far in the last 13 years, it has it is evolving slightly from being a side function that it is a very historic function where you, it is called upon to solve some specific problem. I want to develop a statistical model for a particular problem. So I can call upon some statistician and say that develop this model where I can predict, I can forecast. So this is a very core function and that was probably true in, in, in yesterday years where you did not have too much of data. Now so much of data is coming from all possible uh, scenarios within from your organization, transactional data, outside social data, and whatever data that you can think of it is coming. Now there is a, there is a need that how do I make use of that data? Now the question is how do I make analytics, how do I leverage analytics more and more for my operations, for my decisions? And therefore the challenge is that you need to have that skill, that stat skill, skill, that econometric skill, that data mining skill. You need to have that as core. Nobody can deny that. But at the same time, another push has to come from top. You need to identify what business problem I am trying to solve and how do I in, uh, in, involve analytics in more and more my business functions. Because if you are not asking the right business problem, it will always remain a very historic, historic function. It, it will always be used for solving some specific problem. In retail, I have few of two different worlds. We have worked with uh, clients in, in uh, UK and uh, Europe, uh, in US and uh, UK, wherein around 90% is from the organized retail. So or retail, uh, organized retail forms 90% of their, their market. So you have Tesco, you have Kroger, you have Walmart, where everybody goes there and shop. In India, if you look at the organized retail, it's only 5% of your market, nearly 5% of your retail market. So maybe uh, Big Bajar and, and, and and more. And also we have seen problems in retail market for the last five, six years. There, the use of, the use of data in solving retail problems is humongous. Especially with the, loyalty, with the loyalty program. So for example, if you go to the retail market and swipe something, and you want to just buy something on, on, on let's say, you go to Big Bajar. I will take example of Big Bajar. If you go to Big Bajar and you buy something. If you have a loyalty card and you, uh, Big Bajar knows that who you are, Probably that can be used for immense number of business problems. For your, I need to know if I'm, I am. My goal is to grow my sales like for like sales for for so for the next year. Let's say I want to grow two percent uh, like for like. How do I do that? <coughs> Maybe the data will tell me who are my best customers. Should I focus on my best customers? Should I focus on all? So how do I make that decision? Which categories I should focus on? Where should I promote more? Probably in the absence of the granular data, I will just say let's. Promote on 26 January, okay, it's a separate or something such a thing. And let's promote on 15 of August. These are my, I am, these are my, my key days for the years I just promote. And then you get to the sale. Well, everybody will buy. Everybody will go to, uh, to Bajar and then buy. But probably there are other things that I can do. Is if I look at the challenge is that I, as I told you, that 5% of my sales are coming from organized retail. But for Big Bajar, or let's say for Reliance, if you have a loyalty card, and suppose everyone is using a loyalty card, I will know who are my best customers, what is their respect, what they buy, how promotion sensitive they are, 
who are able to promote the money and everything, but who are able to promote only those items which are being bought by price sensitive customers. I didn't really promote, I don't really don't need to go with a full ad in newspaper saying it's success content. I will just give a specific promotion to the product that we are trying. I know this customer has started buying diapers. It's a baby in the house. So there is a need to promote and give products for, for this customer. Rather than giving promotion diapers and everything. Or somebody has started, well, somebody has got so there is a lifestyle change in some customers. So suppose some of you uh, uh, students will go into the job market uh, very soon and then you will get married. And then if you add, if the virtual are tracking your, your behavior, well, this person was buying maybe some specific gender specific items, but now they have started buying a family. Well, like it looks like there is a change in the family uh, in the lifestyle. So they, they can promote it something better. I want to, let's say Hindustan Leader is coming with, or let's say, let's say, uh, let's say Hindustan Leader is coming with uh, a new product and they will go to Big Bajaj and say that I want to introduce this product. So Big Bajaj will say, I have this limited space and I need to display some items. So there is a delisting that I have to do for certain, certain items because Hindustan Leader being a good customer, good supplier for me, a big supplier for me, so I need to make way for, for those items. How do I make those decisions? So, probably in the absence of any specific data, I will say, who are these are my bus of category, just remove them and then put this new product or, or new, new line item there. But with the, with the data, I can actually make that final decision that, okay, let me look at the categories. What will happen if I remove these categories? There is the historical data. What will be the impact on my best customers? Depending upon what business questions you are trying to solve, I don't want to touch my price sensitive customers. I don't want to touch anyone coming from that geography, or I don't want to touch this category because there is a cross relationship between two, those two categories. I don't want to touch. Depending upon what business questions you are trying right to answer, you can arrive at that decision. In the absence of that, that, uh, that, that philosophy in your organization, how do I make those decisions? So the challenge is that your whole organization has to be geared towards thinking in that direction. It, is, it does, should not stop. It, 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 it does not, should not stop at, at a level where only few people understand and if you have to make a decision, others don't understand. So many of will do this. I, I don't understand how you are making a decision because, because historically I have made decisions at a certain time. And now you are saying that okay, now you look at this segment, this segment, and this segment, it is very complicated. That is the challenge that, that we have faced. In typical in Western world, what happens is that, let us say, in UK, 70% of sales. 70, uh, uh, so let's say for Procter & Gamble or let's say Nestle, 70% of their sales will flow through Tesco. So if they are introducing a new market, new product, it will work very closely with Tesco. They will say that 70% of my sales are coming through you, I need to just work with you and understand how, how can I design my, my new products. Now you have customer level data with Tesco. So therefore, actually you can, you can make a product design based on actual transaction data. Versus let's say compared to, to India, where I am introducing new products, typically it is based on market research surveys and, and the feedback that we keep on the scene. It is really based on actual 100% transition data. So, when Nestle is introducing a new product, they will work hand in hand with Tesco. They will work hand in hand with Kroger. In India, if Unilever is introducing a new product, they will just introduce a new product. If you want to buy this, it's your choice. If you don't want to buy it, please. That's how the, the dynamics, the, uh, it is so different from, from uh, that one to this one. And that is because of the power of the data. So the, the, the data has an immense possibility to change the way the business has been done in the past and how it is going to be done in the future. So that's what my, uh, my, uh, my request to the, the students and the, and the uh, community here would be that analytics is going to be a core function more and more in, in future. And the way to fully leverage the, the potential of analytics is to start asking the right question and then say how I am going to use analytics to solve that problem. And rather than it is sometimes I will use some model at some point of time or, or, or let us say I want to just forecast something so I will laugh up or one of somebody. Because this is a reality that nobody can escape. There is going to be explosion of data. It's already happening. It's going to happen. Energy market again, it's, it's going to. Uh, I I was on a few projects where we were trying to forecast energy theft for a company in UK. And uh, you mentioned about energy theft, somebody mentioned about energy theft. And therefore, I got to know some mm -hmm. interesting aspects of it, about energy market as well. And I'll tell you, since I am, this is an outside perspective, you can always say that probably I don't know what domain, which I don't know. 
But at the same time, I do see that the learning that I have got from other industries is that in, in energy market. So for example, I was reading somewhere that suppose if you have an ideal world where you are getting power from, from different sources, so nuclear energy or, or let's say gas power plant or, or let's say a coal power plant, and the user should have the flexibility to choose which power, which power I, I, I can choose from. So based on the price increase the value of the day. That's an ideal world where user should have the capability, a smart grid, I, 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 I can have the capability to choose that okay, this is the power source that I want to use because this is tariff or you can change the tariff during the, day of the, 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 the time of the day that, okay, for first three hours there is a lot of load, so probably the tariff is high, so maybe I will use less uh, power and I will shift my power to the for a later part of the day. And that is very, uh, very ideal work. I do that sometime in a very crude way in my home, wherein wherever the, the power goes off and uh, it is on the generator, which is a uh, higher tariff, I typically Power. And that's a one unit, and that's a very, very, uh, what a personally humanistic way of applying uh, uh, energies. But then I can see that if this is applied on a much larger scale, where you have that intelligent system where uh, you can just shift power based on how <coughs> you can from and what the tariff, then actually you can do a lot of things, demand management, and actually uh, I want efficiencies from the from the whole system. That is my outside view. You can always question that. And I, uh, but that I, I feel very excited about that. So I will end at this point of time. As I said, that we will also talk about. I have tried to capture the most exciting thing that I wanted to talk about. But then it's, it's going to be a, a, there's, a, there's immense possibility that energies can solve uh, a, for different businesses. And energy and financial markets are, are no exceptions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Question. Yes. Hi. So uh, I was just listening to you very thoroughly. Um, when coming back to digital analytics, if you quickly highlight what are the techniques, statistical techniques or ecological techniques that would be used in digital analytics, that might help to develop the program or the courses better. So what is that that you uh, cluster is something that we often use. So uh, where you want to segment customers. So you want to just segment customers based upon uh, their uh, buying habits. So the tenant that you follow in retail is you are what you buy. So based upon what you are buying, looking at your basket, we can segment you. So we can segment, well, you are, let's say, you like my team. You are a fine food uh, person, you can go for uh, wine, expensive food items, you want to buy from food from uh, different parts of the world. So you are a fine food, uh, you are a connoisseur. Or you are a kid in the family or you are in mid-market, or you are a price instead of customer. So we will we'll do the costing based upon what you have bought and, and typically 10, 5, 10 years of data. And I am talking about where you have the data. In India it will, it will grow, but we have the historical data and we can change track in your lifestyle that uh, you did not have kid in your family and now you have moved to a different segment. So certainly we can actually start uh, uh, organizing a different program or different promotion program. So clustering, the second is a very tricky part which we really don't have any specific technique but uh, when you want to analyze promotions. Promotions analysis is very complicated. Where you are running many, many promotions uh, are simultaneously. You are running in-store promotions, you are running very targeted promotions. Targeted promotions are typically not very done very effectively in India. But you are running various promotions at the same time. And let us say, uh, if I am just thinking of an example that uh, Samsung, or let's say not, not Samsung, so again go back to Cadbury wants to run a promotion and they say that uh, let's say I will give you 5% off or 10% off, you will buy this pack. And uh, you really don't know whether the other promotion is running simultaneously in the, in the in this row. And therefore, you just single out the effect of that promotion to show that when Cadbury runs promotion, the budget are taking it up to 5% or 10%. That becomes way really too complicated. So I believe that we really don't have any specific technique that you know, really that. So that is when Do you think uh, predictive modeling uh, can be used in such a, in such cases? Uh, predictive modeling uh, is is actually used very extensively. So it's not something that is very specific to retail. That's why I did not mention on that. It is it is uh, about predicting whatever. So whenever anyway, any business decision that you are going to take, you want to predict on that. So that is something that is used already across uh, different. That's why I didn't want to touch upon that. But that can be used. 
that definitely can be used. But then in this case, you are talking about machine predicting what we can promote. Yes. So on promotions, one we would like to predict. So but there is no target in promotion. So I am sending you some promotion. Yes. Which I as I told you, it does not get, it does not get implemented very effectively. I will give an example. So I am uh, a customer of a bank and I always get promotions on fine food on non registered right? I enjoy Indian food and I don't uh, drink wine. I get promotions always for me so I get, never, never have a in my life. Which I don't know about how much they are doing. And this is like last six years, it's not that one time. Another bank, they have, they have my full credit card history and typically everyone knows for a credit card promotion whatever you get is what you get, what you get, everyone is same. There is no differentiation. That there is a brochure, they will, they will print out a standard brochure and then it goes to every credit card customer. Surprisingly, you know in the history I have been a customer for the last 10 years, you know what I buy, what I don't buy. Why don't you give me promotion on, let's say, Alan Sony, I buy Alan Sony. Why don't you give me promotion on Alan Sony? I go to the shop and shop. One of the uh, basic question and very briefly if you can answer, what are the firms, Indian firms? I know there are a lot of firms, Nanambi, Tesco. Uh, they work, they have a different branch or section to work on the retail analytics. And most of the firms that they work on is Walmart, you know, uh, some other, mostly it's US or UK based firms. So when you were referring an example of Big Bazaar, do we have capability in India in storing those data and what are the firms which are coming on the potential in the Indian market to use? So I believe that I I I will be I will I will I will making up an example of Big Bazaar just to for the sake of understanding. But I really don't know at what level they, they have that capability. But I will give you uh, a different context because since the, the, it is growth industry, the focus of Indian firms or most of the Indian companies is on growth, open new stores, I grab real estate. Because typically analytics is you do when you are optimizing or you want to optimize your business, typically. So when you are in growth stage where you want to grab as much market share as possible, its, it's, it's focus is slightly different. And you want to gather as much customer data as possible before you start focusing on, on how do I tweak my total refining business? Do you do any farms which are doing that in India? Uh, yes. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So, uh, while what you say about optimization is right, but to give you a practical example, is the, let's say the banking credit card business. Okay. Uh, ING wants to promote his credit cards. Okay. So who does he get the credit cards to? So uh, there are companies here which take the historic data of the existing client base of the bank okay, and then based on their demographics, based on their uh, previous history, they are able to predict that which are the customers who should be given a credit card okay. and the acquisition so <clears throat> these are things which are already actually being done in India. Okay, if you want to know. Uh, no, more I was about I was more India. talking about the retail retail analytics. So so in the big bazaar, in the Spencer, so what there is a concept right. called shopper stock. Shopper stock has what uh, no done is they have a loyalty management program, and what they claim is their 70 or to 80 percent revenue is coming from loyal customers. So they have a big division for that. And uh, I heard that guy who is heading, you know, who headed that uh, you know, business, and he was pretty bullish on uh, pretty bullish on that business. That you know, we have uh, made an impact to the business up to 80 percent. So that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, they, they have a business unit. That's right. Uh, and capital, capital is another one. Uh, we are looking at uh, uh, we ourselves are looking at uh, this market uh, in. Uh, uh, you know, uh, in connection with uh, the mobile uh, technology in terms of location based service. So, if, if a, a customer is going to walk into uh, uh, you know, uh, Big Bazaar, then based on his demographics, what can I offer him? I know he's getting off at, say, Sector 18 uh, metro station and he's used his phone. I, 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 I'm aware of that. So, based on that, I offer him that if you come. To shop stop, I can offer you this right now. So these kind of things are happening in India. Thank you. I think uh, it's
सो टच माय प्रीवियस स्पीकर्स हु स्पोक अबाउट द नो इंडस्ट्री पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन द ट्रेनिंग डाटा एनालिटिक्स एंड आई एम टोल्ड टू गिव द एकेडमिक पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन द सेम टॉपिक but as you know that the data analytics is a very vast area as dr alok uh, speaks about uh, high frequency data dr jogesh was on regional data analytics so what uh, i can speak is uh, the data analytics on area which i am currently working so that is basically econometrics and time series analysis and more specifically it is the time series model now in academics if you see uh, the the subject of data analytics has not been taught in the institute apart from very few institute the way it should be. too much focus has been given in general on the theoretical part while the application of this model remains neglected So they may be very good in theory, but when you give them data and ask them that please run this model and give me the inference, be it forecasting or anything, then there is a problem. So that is one of the area which I thought that there is a big gap uh, in the application of the data analytics uh, in the academics. Uh, and also, if you see the quality of analytical works which has been published in the international journal, you will find that. the number is not that much and if you compare it with the china <coughs> generally we every time we try to compare with china and we find that there is a huge difference between the number of analytical works which has been published in good international journal the chinese publication versus indian publication there is a huge gap in this area so in this context you know the students will be going to present five analytical cases uh, and uh, uh, this is basically uh, uh, you know uh, these five cases analytical cases are the outcome of the course which uh, i'm currently offering which is called uh, modeling and forecasting in a financial market why this is important because these two sectors or these two markets generate complex data Which requires special skill, and sometimes people say that the power market, not in India but abroad, you know, analyzing power market is more complex than analyzing the commodity because it is more complex than the commodity market. So in this context, the course has been developed, and it is it is an applied course which has been developed from a practitioner's perspective, so that. After learning the model, the student can apply it in the real using real life data. However, one has to take into consideration the short of time span. The model which generally I cover in this course, which I we used to learn in 18 months time, so that has to be packaged in a two and a half months period, so that they can learn something and at the same time deliver. So that was one of the problem of of developing this kind of course. the shortage of time and at the same time well i am not basically from a conventional economist i am basically an outsider an indian turned economist so i also keep in mind the problem i had faced when i learned this subject and i try to address this issue in this course so that you know it would be easier for the student who may not have that academic background well you know the data analysis as we know that somebody says that data is the 21st century square and past few years if you see the trend there is a significant development in the data analytics in every in every every aspect in the sphere of the data analytics but in my area which is time series modeling i want to give some i want to identify some trends Which are very promising in this area, which is bit technical, but since the students are also here, so I I uh, I uh, like to just uh, highlight the issues. One of the major development which has been happening at this point of time, and this is not a high frequency data which all of us already uh, spoken, 
this is generally a, not that unfrequency data. One of the major things which is emerging in this area is probably with the vector orientation model. Now, when the model has been developed, one of the underlying assumptions of this model is, is that the, the variables should be stationary in nature. When I say stationary in nature, the statistical property is that the mean and variance should be tied in variable. Now, there is a problem that when you want to analyze anything, say for example, I want to analyze what is the impact of oil price stock on Indian stock market. Very relevant issue. There is a plenty of business decision if you want to identify the linkages between how the stocks in the oil price transmitted into the Indian stock market. Now, the problem is if you want to use the bar model, the conventional bar model, as the bar structure equal, well, if I define that, what is the bar model? So, bar model is basically a system of equations where each variable is represented by a linear combination of its own lag value and the lag value of the other variables. And it's a dynamic kind of model. It is a good model in terms of forecasting as well as prediction. Now, coming back to the problem, if you want to analyze the impact of oil price shock on the Indian stock market using that bar model. One of the problem of the bar model, as the model suggests that underlying variables must be stationary, means time invariant, mean and variance. But if you look at the actual series, which is the oil price and the stock market, Celsius, for example, these are generally a non stationary series where mean and variance equal changing over time. Now, if the original relation is the level, then instead of not addressing the level, if you want to address it in the bar framework, then you have to convert the data into a D log of that thing, which is the growth rate of the variable, which is a stationary test. Now, if the actual process is in the label, but you are using that in terms of growth rate of all these variables in a bar framework, then the bar will be misspecified. So that is one of the problems which the model arts which are dealing for a long period of time. Fortunately, there are a development in this model in the very recent year, which is called Toda Yamamoto extended bar model, where you can use the variable without changing the stationary property of the variable and even without changing the co-integration property. So that is one of the major development in the bar model. The other two development in these areas are mixed frequency bar model and asymmetric bar model. Now another idea where there are Many things have been happening is that we got called co integration. The co integration is defined as a systemic co movement of the two or more series in a long period of time. It is a path breaking concept developed by two persons called Angel and Granger, and they got Nobel Prize for, the, for this particular uh, you know, concept or the model in 2003. However, this particular concept of co-integration, which is very strong analytical tool, it has undergone significant metamorphosis over the period of time. One of the problems of the Engelbringer two-step procedure for co-integration is that it cannot detect the multiple co-integration relationship, which is very common in case you are working with a multivariate term. So then the next generation of models came, which is called johnson Juscelius maximum likelihood procedure. When we are the students, that was a trust in him. And I remember I published several papers based on that paper. But then again, within a few years, there was a debate appears with the testing of this non stationary property regarding the we call it English test. And somebody says that the conventional model, which is called ADA, augmented test or